Launched in September, the One Roar Fund will serve as a vehicle to help all 31 of Columbia's varsity athletics programs and club sports to compete at the highest level. We remain committed to providing our student athletes with the best resources available to help them achieve their goals. Although competition has been postponed, the competitive fire within our student athletes still burns as they await the call to return to athletic events. One Roar will provide our 700 plus student athletes with the necessary resources to stay in prime shape, mentally sharp, and above all, healthy and safe as we await the continuation of Ivy League play. Together, we roar as one. Welcome back, everybody, to the virtual spring season for Columbia football and the Columbia Football Players Club. This evening, I'm joined by Coach John McLaughlin. Coach McLaughlin is our offensive line coach and assistant head coach who joined the Lions in March of 2015. He arrived at Columbia after nine years as the University of Pennsylvania's offensive line coach and served as the offensive coordinator there in his last six seasons. Uh, throughout his 29-year coaching career, 10 offensive linemen under his tutelage have played in the National Football League. Coach Mack, thanks for sitting down and talking with the alumni tonight. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, really appreciate this opportunity, and, and uh, hello to everyone out there watching. One of, one of the questions we get asked by a lot of our alumni uh, is about recruiting, and uh, we'll, we'll start right there because we're kind of just at the tail end of our, our recruiting season um, for next fall's class. But uh, what are what are you looking for uh, in recruits at the offensive line? Obviously, you have interior and uh, exterior linemen. Uh, but what, what are some key things that you're looking for in offensive line recruits? Oh, definitely. You know, that's a, that's a great question. And I think I um, have been very, very fortunate um, to have worked for Coach Pagnoli for so long and and, and he had a great blueprint um, before I, I joined his staff. Um, and it was very, very similar to what we had previously um, at other places. Um, and, and so I, th I think the most important thing is, um, you know, recruit intangibles. Um, you know, find guys who, who have a, a great passion for football, um, who love the game, can articulate why they love the game. You know, if they've thought about it, it's, it's – it's something that they, they wear on their heart and on their sleeve. Um, and, and so finding intangibles, you know, personality, demeanor, an energy source for the work that needs to be done. Um, you, know, you, can, you can be a good high school player simply um, because you're maybe a little bit more talented, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. Maybe you matured uh, quickly um, before other people. Um, but, but in order to be a, a successful college football player, especially at, at a school like Columbia, where not only do you have the transition from moving away from home, but you have the academic um, burden that a school like Columbia places on you. Um, you have all the work um, that comes in the weight room. You have the, the bumps and bruises that come on the field. It, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to, to grind through that, to sacrifice through that. Um, so that's the first thing we're looking for is we're looking for, for that, that demeanor, that temperament, that personality. Um, and then everything else we, we look for on film, you know, I always say we, we're looking for non-coachable qualities. You know, I, I don't want to grade a kid or evaluate a kid based on what he's being asked to do um, by his high school coach. Uh, you know, we potentially run a completely different system. I may teach technique differently. Um, so we're looking for things that, that you can't coach, you know, things like uh, balance, uh, agility, 
you know, in reactive agility, getting out in space and being able to hit things square, um, flexibility, being able to drop a center of gravity, uh, demeanor, again, trying to see, does he play with a little bit of nastiness and energy on film? Um, you know, and, and uh, th those are just things that we're looking for. Um, we'll clean up the technique. And I think that opens up, um, you know, the recruiting range, you know, so we may even look outside the box for recruits, look at a big tight end or look at a defensive lineman. And if he possesses those tools, project the fact that we can teach him the technique and turn him into an offensive lineman. Awesome. So my, my next question, you know, once you go from recruiting, now you're coaching them at practice, you know, what, what are some, some of your favorite drills or techniques that, that you uh, run your position through uh, at practice that, you know, are some of your favorites that can carry over into a game? Yeah, well, uh, that's awesome. You know, we, we talk um, in, in our meeting room about um, five advantages an offensive lineman has over its work. OK, and, and that that's what we're going to constantly work on our preparation. And, and those advantages are our football IQ. If we're super well prepared and smart football players, then, then we have uh, an advantage as far as anticipation. Uh, we, we can anticipate what the defense is going to do with the defensive lineman that we have to block or a linebacker on a stunt. Um, and that football IQ is something we have to work on preparing each week. So you know, sitting with our guys and watching film. I mean, that, that, that's as, as fun a part of the day as possible. We get to meetings and, and sitting there and talking football and teaching football is awesome. Then we talk about um, technique and being able to fix things with technique. You know, you, you can't control whether the guy you're having to block this week is maybe stronger than you or maybe faster than you. Uh, you can't control if you turned your ankle in the, in the second quarter and now you have to block him with your ankle spatted up in the third quarter. Um, so being able to constantly learn how to use technique in very simple, sound, fundamental technique and adjust it and adjust your footwork based on, you know, the challenge you have each snap um, is something we work on. So individual period, individual period would be the next thing. So going from, you know, sitting there watching film with the guys in a meeting to going out and having, and as offensive line, um, position group we have the most individual because we get to sneak in individual during special teams and stuff like that so um, I really, really love those two things and those are two of the biggest advantages um, that we can have over our opponents is, is have a super high football IQ and have a, a you know a control of our technique um, that allows us to handle whatever we're facing that week. Uh, and you, you talk about offensive line play so passionately. You've been an offensive line coach for quite some time. What is it about uh, the offensive line position that you love so much? You know, it, it's uh, and certainly uh, not to you know discredit any other position or any other sport, um, but but I really I believe that um, offensive line is the epitome of, of, of team sport. You know, really. Um, guys that uh, don't have stats, um, don't do it for credit. They truly do it for, for a love of the game, a love of what the game does to themselves, um, a love of how the game gives them a chance to express themselves, you know, um, a love for the guys next to them. Um, and it really is a selfless, hardworking, um, you know, tough family within a team. Um, and so, you know, it, any great teams I've been around have had offensive linemen that have raised to the level of captain and, and usually multiple offensive linemen that are strong leaders in the locker room. And, and I think that, that that's a, a culture that every team's trying to build. And quite often the offensive line epitomizes that. Awesome. Now, part of this, uh, this broadcast is is to let the alumni get to get to know you guys a little personally on a personal level. You've been at uh, Columbia for for almost six years now. Uh, what's something that surprised you about Columbia, about New York City, uh, that you you didn't think you you'd find enjoyable or didn't know about before you got here? Well, yeah, it's it's amazing. I, I uh, you know I would have said I was extremely well versed in. Um, in the Ivy League, having coached at uh, two other Ivy League schools, you know, in high school, I was a, 
you know, a, uh, an Ivy League Patriot League recruit and this took some visits to Ivy League schools. So I thought I, I, I had the league um, pretty well figured out, but I had never been on Columbia's campus. I had been up to the athletic facility um, in, in Inwood. Um, and then, of course, that's beautiful. The, st- the stadium is beautiful. And I knew that as a, as a visiting coach. Um, but I'd never been on campus. Um, and, and so I, uh, of course, had the, the mistaken impression of what Columbia's campus would look like. Um, but getting on campus um, and getting in the neighborhood of Morningside Heights, it, it actually, it just blew me away. Campus is incredibly gorgeous. It's, it's the, the most beautiful urban campus in the country. And, and the neighborhood of Morningside Heights and, and the surrounding amenities to campus is, is incredible. And um, that, that was a huge, huge surprise. Um, you know, the second thing that was, uh, I didn't even have a grasp at what a tremendous benefit it was, is the re- ability for Columbia, Columbia undergrads and, and our football undergrads to build relationships with an alumni network that lives and works within a train ride of campus. And so, uh, you know, the alumni networks at, at all these schools are fantastic but actually being able to build that network as a freshman, sophomore, junior, uh, leading into graduation um, is an advantage Columbia students have that, that no other school does. Awesome. I, I couldn't, couldn't agree with you more on, on both of those. Uh, 10 years later, I still think campus is just one of the most impressive college campuses that I've been on. Uh, but, you know, here, here's the fun question and, and, Often, offensive linemen love to eat. What's your favorite places or place to eat in New York City? Now, do we have a time limit on this question? Because we can go for a Coach, little while. as long as you need. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I think I'm all about, you know, I love food. So I think it's more about the food experience. And, and, and obviously, um, you know, recruiting is, is something that as a college coach, you have to be passionate about. And, and, for, for us, it's rejuvenatory. You know, you, you, you get these uh, high school kids and their parents and it's all new to them. It's exciting to them. You know, they've got um, sky high dreams and goals and, and you bring them in on, on recruiting weekends and you go to Carmine's and just that whole food experience, the energy, the excitement, you, you know, you're there with uh, 80 of your best friends, you know, have a whole corner of Carmine's and, and uh, you know, platters of, of, uh, great Italian food is being set on your table. So Carmine's has to be because just because of the food experience, uh, one of the best places, um, but kind of, you know, sneaky places. Uh, and again, it's, it's kind of how, um, you know, Columbia has a little bit of everything, you know, and New York city has a little bit of everything, you know, about, uh, seven miles away from, uh, the facility is a, a little, uh, you know, fisheries Island, city Island, you know, and you may have been the person that first pointed me in that direction, but it's an incredible play, place to go and sit. And you can sit um, on a dock, you know, on a restaurant that has outdoor patio, dockside seating, um, have some seafood, you know, um, have a Diet Coke and uh, kind of the water in the background and so on. So, you know, 15 minutes in one direction, you're down Times Square at Carmine's, 15 minutes in the other direction, you're sitting on the water, um, you know, having a, you know, a great seafood meal. The magic of New York City. So w- what's something that uh, our alums, maybe maybe even our staff don't know about you? Do you have any special special talents or, or hobbies? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm pretty boring, I guess. You know, I, I, I tell people all the time that um, we're extremely blessed to, to be able to make a living in this profession because uh, – what other people may do as hobbies, whether it's fantasy football, whether it's volunteer to coach at their, you know, their local Pop Warner team, you know, we get to do that every day. So, you know, um, you know, watching high school film or watching clinic tape or, or th- those are those are fun things. And and uh, it's a lot of hours of work, um, but it's also part of our passion and, and our hobbies. But uh, I would say the one thing that probably um, it was a pandemic um kind of goal and hobby that came up is, is I'm going to say I became proficient at smoking meat. You know, I got a, I got a smoker and, and, uh, and figured it out. You know, the first attempt wasn't, wasn't great, but uh, have have since got pretty proficient at it. So 
Um, that's a good fat guy hobby to have is, is figure out how to smoke meat and you, you'll never go hungry. Uh, I'm sure myself and, and the staff are all looking forward to the invite. Uh, to, <laughs> 100%. Uh, to I mean, some of your uh, new, newfound hobby. Coach Mac, that, that's all I got. Uh, thank you for sitting down with us and, and it's, I'll, I'll let you close it out. Any, any kind of message you want to send to the alumni or fans, the floor is yours. I, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for uh, the support. Thank you for uh, the commitment to build um, what we all have a chance to, to work with. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to be at a, another school during a, a time where a lot of Ivy League championships were won. And I was fortunate to be at a Big Ten school at a time where there's two Big Ten championships won. And, and Columbia has everything in place right now. It really does. Uh, it, it doesn't mean we're going to win every game. It do, doesn't mean we're going to win a championship every season. But everything's in place. And, and that's a an incredible reflection on a commitment from, from the administration, um, um, but really the loyalty of alums and, and the support of alums. And and we really have everything in place to, to build something that's going to last. It, it's not a, a flash in the pan. Um, it, it's a pretty special place. Now that we've heard from Coach McLaughlin, uh, let's s- switch over to one of his former players. We're here with Ty- Tyler Schoenwolf, class of 2019, who he started 30 games a- as a Columbia Lion. Tyler, thanks for sitting down tonight. Thanks for having me, Greg. Tyler, we just want to get uh, – a player's perspective or a former player's perspective of what it was like playing for coach McLaughlin and couldn't think of anybody better, but you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was, I was uh, lucky enough and, and uh, very grateful for the opportunity to be uh, recruited by coach Mack and then coach by him uh, playing, uh, you know, center for a couple of years and then switching over to guard. Um, but it was, it was really great. Uh you know, I think looking back, the things that I remember the most are, um, you know, just just all the time we spent in the meeting rooms um, and, you know, whether it be in there joking around um, or, you know, talking about deep, uh, you know, philosophical stuff even. And I think as a player, I think it's, it's uh, stuff that we always kind of all uh, maybe didn't really appreciate as much. But now after, you know, having been away for a couple of years, I think, uh, I think a lot of the stuff we talked about in there was really huge. Um, just, just from a development standpoint, uh, as, as people and as adults, you know, um, you're going to, uh, you're going away to college as an 18, 19 year old kid. And then, you know, you're not around your parents anymore. And you, coach Matt kind of, uh, or, you know, your position coach ends up taking that role on a little bit, I think as, you know, just kind of being a, uh, like a guiding light. And um, so, that, you know, that's, the, the, the deep, uh, you know, conversation is kind of more just about being human and growing up, becoming men um, is what I remember the most uh, about about playing for Coach Mack. Awesome. And, and any insight into what what Coach Mack was like on a, on a game day when, you know, when you strapped up and were ready to go to battle? Yeah. Yeah. Coach Mack was he was always very intense, um, you know, very intense, but also. Uh, you know, definitely loved his, his players and, you know, would, would uh, express that to us. You know, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of offensive line coaches um, are usually like kind of like the loudest guys around on, on, on a lot of staffs. And I don't think, you know, coach Max style wasn't really a, uh, you know, he, he wasn't into yelling or uh, like intimidating people or anything like that. He, um, you know, he coached us hard and was intense, but, you know, always, you know, let everybody know, you know, how much he, he cared about us and loved us and stuff, especially the guys who, you know, maybe uh, he got a little more hard on um, during, during practices or games, whatever. Um, you know, he always made sure to, you know, just kind of make sure everybody was sticking together. Everybody was tight. You know, I, I think he was huge. He was a huge part of the kind of the culture change that happened um, from, uh, you know, so my first year was uh, his first year and we, you know, during our, my our four years together, we ended a, uh, a twenty plus game losing streak, and then had some some pretty good seasons. And so I think he really was a huge part of the culture change, and and just kind of teaching us, um, you know, primarily as offensive linemen, but obviously he's involved with you know the whole the whole team. Um, but just kind of 
uh, helping us to understand what uh, a winning culture looked like and, um, you know, just guiding us that way. Awesome. Well, thanks again for sitting down with us, Tyler. Hope at some point soon we can get together with our alumni and, and uh, see each other in person. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a pleasure, Greg. Next week on our Conversations with the Coaches series, we'll sit down with defensive secondary coach Andre Murphy.